Hey guys and welcome to building the ultimate woodworking workstation part 2. Okay guys, so in my previous video I got rolling on building my version of the ultimate woodworking workstation. I got as far as assembling the frame and putting the top on. And though I want to add quite a bit of equipment to this bench, today I'm only going to focus on adding the table saw. I'm going to be installing the table saw in this area here, which means I'm going to have to remove a piece of the top here, allowing the top of the table saw to sit flush with the top of the bench, giving me one large outfit table. But before I can do that, there's some additional partitioning and paneling I need to install first. Okay, first things first, um, uh, attaching this panel here, it does not so much have to do with the table saw installation, but it is to add to the integrity of the, of the structure of the bench. Um, as for the gap here at the top, that will be explained towards the, the end of the video. So, um, uh, the only preparation I did on the panel itself was just put a little edge there with a the router and then drill the pilot holes and then, uh, then just attach it here. As you may have guessed, this area is a little bit too large only for my table saw. That's because another partition will be installed here, splitting where my table saw will be from where my dust extraction will be. The only hiccup being the exhaust on my table saw. The partition is basically going to sit flush with the, with the exhaust, which means I'm going to have to make a cutout, allowing the, the exhaust to be connected to my dust collection or dust extraction. I'm going to use my jigsaw to remove this area here. Okay, so now with the partition installed, the next step is just to add a base here. Notice that um, I've added a cutout here as well so that it reaches all the way down to the bottom and then this cutout here for the exhaust of the table saw. Okay guys, so the second last piece of paneling I'm going to install before I'm going on with the table saw is going to be the base. The base is going to be fit on top of these pieces that I've in, uh, installed here on the inside and just be uh, fixed with screws from the top. I also only remove the corner here so that the panel can fill the entire area that uh, should be filled. Yeah. Okay, so it took a bit of convincing, but it's in. Now I'll just fix it with screws. Okay, so the last panel I'm going to install is going to be this one. Um, this is going to be the support point for the bed that my table saw is going to stand on, on this side. Uh, and then from there I can remove the the, the piece from the top and put in the bed for the table saw and I'm pretty much done. With all the paneling installed, it's time to install the base for the table saw. I'm going to make the base slightly adjustable height-wise so that I can perfectly line up the top of the table saw with the top of the bench. Now to make the base of the table saw height adjustable, I'm installing bracing underneath the top um, that I've cut these slots in. It's, uh, it's only a 1 inch slot or 22 mil slot but it will give me enough adjustability or fine tuning to perfectly line up the top of my table saw. The 
Besides making the table saw bed height adjustable, the bracing also plays a greater role and given more structural integrity to the base, minimizing any possible deflection when the table saw is placed on top of it. Okay guys, so with the bracing installed, I'm quite confident the bed will be able to hold the, the weight of the table saw. But being it is what my most expensive piece of equipment in my shop, I want to make double sure and I'm going to add these little, little triangles for them on the inside here, just to make double sure. And that's it for the bed. Time to fit it. Okay, so for now the bed can sit right here, it's not fixed yet, I'm going to drill the holes around the edge, fit it with bolts, remove the piece at the top that needs to be taken out, put the table saw in, line it up and fasten the bolts. Okay, so the table saw bed is installed now. Only hand tight at this stage, I haven't fixed it yet because I still need to line up or, or fine tune the height. Um, at this stage, I've only got normal nuts on the bolts, but as soon as I get around to the hardware store, I'll swap them out with lock nuts. Because the last thing I want is the saw dropping while I'm using it. Right, so now I can go on uh, removing the cutout and putting the table saw in its place. Just a little side note before I go on, on the table saw itself. The table saw has these little uh, extendable beds to support larger overhang or, or cutting larger panels. Um, these aren't going to be necessary anymore because the old station will effectively now become an outfit table and support overhang. So these I'm going to remove and I'm only going to be installing this area into the, into the station. Making the cutouts for the table saw is make or break for this segment of the project. So to make life a bit easier on myself, I install these pieces here at the exact width of the table saw. Besides strengthening the top, I'm also going to use them to guide my cut when removing the piece. After I installed these two guides at the bottom, I drilled holes in the corners here to use as reference points as I can't see the guides from the top. And the idea is to cut as close as possible to the guide using a jigsaw to remove the largest part of the top. After that, I'm going to use a flush trim bit on my router just to even it out. Okay, now that the largest part uh, of the board has been removed with the jigsaw, I'm just going to use the flush uh, or the trim bit with the router just to even it out. In addition to using the flush trim bit to level it out, I put a 45 degree chamfer around the top edge so that any piece of wood moving over the bed of the table saw won't hook on the top of the bench. With the cutout made and the edges trimmed, it's time to put the table saw in. I suspect I'm going to have a bit of an obstruction here, uh, but I'm sure I'll get it done. Okay guys, so I used planks like these to knock the base or wedge it into place until I was happy with the height. Now I can just fix the bolts. Uh, it would have been pro or probably been better using two or three jacks to jack the bed up into its correct position 
and then fix it, but I didn't have jack, so I had to make do. Okay guys, so with the table saw fixed and placed the bolts in there, um, all, all I'm going to do is uh, fit one last piece of paneling over here, then take this rail that the fence runs on and extend it to run all the way to the edge of the table and then the slots on the bed I'm going to extend maybe another 3 400 mil so that my mitre gauge and uh, cross cut sled and stuff like that can follow all the way through, to, uh, through the saw blade. Okay, so this is pretty much it for my rail extension. Um, I cut this 45 with the table saw, removed the bulk of the, the wood at the back to create this profile for it to slot into the gap that was sitting here with the router and fixed it to the top of the bench. Uh, this is obviously not going to be my primary fence for wide cuts like this. I am going to install a larger, more robust fence over here, but that's going to double for my mitre saw and also my router table that's going to come here and my table saw. Uh, but with a fence like this, the most important thing to remember, obviously, is that, the, that it runs parallel with the blade. And it does indeed, uh, because if it leans inward, you can obviously get kicked back. Uh, so it's obviously going to be my responsibility to check it each time before I use it to make sure this wood hasn't buckled or bent or anything like that. Uh, with, so with the rail extension in, I'm just going to extend these rails or these slots, maybe five, six hundred mil in. And that's going to conclude this part of the video. I'm using this board as a, as a guide fence for the router to extend the slots because once again it is obviously crucially important that they run 100% parallel with the blade. And then I'll check the depth of the router bit on the current slots on the table saw. Okay guys, and that's it for part 2 of building my version of the ultimate woodworking station. With the table saw installed, hopefully I can start using the bench. I was a bit concerned about having the bench on wheels, but with the four brakes engaged, assisted by the weight of the bench, it's not going anywhere. There's still a lot to come, like installing the mitre saw, the thickness planer, the compressor, dust extraction and a whole bunch of other things. If you want to see that, remember to subscribe and I'll see you guys soon.